Let me make sure I got this going right. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's good to be here tonight. Amen. Amen. Uh, most of you probably know me, have been here before. Uh, so we'll get right to the Word of God. Amen. Turn in your Bibles to Matthew's Gospel. Um, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10. We're going to read verses 1 through 4. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. If, uh, for those who are physically able to stand, please stand for the reading of God's Word if you're physically able. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, starting in verse 1, and we'll read down to verse 4. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits, to cast them out, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, verse 3, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the publican James, the son of Alphaeus, and Levius, whose surname is Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Let's pray. Father, as your word goes forth today, I pray that it will minister to our hearts. I pray that it will minister to my heart as well, as it always does. And I pray as your word goes forth that it will accomplish all that you wanted to accomplish here at Gustin Baptist Church. I pray blessings over all the people that are here today at Gustin Baptist Church. I pray blessings over their lives. That you will give them strength and wisdom and be with them in all their daily lives. Be with the pastor and his family, the deacons, and all the people that serve you here, Lord Jesus Christ. Because truly, Gustin Baptist Church belongs to you. It's in the Lord Jesus Christ's name I pray. Who died on the cross for the sins of the world. And everybody said, Amen. I entitled this message, it's called Judas Iscariot, the imposter who walked with Christ. We will be going to several scriptures throughout the, the sermon, so... Uh, I'll let you know when I, I want you to go to another scripture. I want to look at an apostle named Judas Iscariot who walked with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to give you some biblical facts about the life of Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot was the son of Simon, John chapter 6, verse 71. Judas Iscariot was one of the 12 apostles our Lord chosen to follow him, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 4. Judas Iscariot was the treasurer who would take money out of the bag. Judas Iscariot was a thief, according to John chapter 5, verse 6. The Bible tells us that Satan entered into Jesus, Judas Iscariot to portray our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, verse 3. Judas Iscariot sold, our, sold out Christ for 30 pieces of silver. That's in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, verse 14 and 15. Judas Iscariot portrayed our Lord with a kiss of betrayal. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, verse 47 and 48. Judas Iscariot hung himself and died the death as a betrayer. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27, verse 3 and 5. Now these are some biblical facts about Judas Iscariot, his life. Now I want to give you some biblical truths about the life of Judas Iscariot and expose to you some spiritual truths that will show you what an imposter will often do. Turning your Bibles to John's Gospel, chapter 12. 
We've got several scriptures to go here. Go to John's Gospel, chapter 12. We're going to read verses 1 through 6. You can remain seated. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 1 through 6. And the Bible says this. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then Mary, a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which would betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for three hundred pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, and he had the bag and bear what was put therein. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, verse 47 through 50. Turn there if you would. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, verses 47 and 50. We're, we're learning a little bit about Judas Iscariot, the posture who walked with Christ. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, verses 47 through 50. And the word of God says this. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hell, Master, and he kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore thou art come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. Turn in your Bibles to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 15 through 23. We're learning a little bit about Judas Iscariot, the man who walked with Christ, an imposter who walked with Christ. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 15 through 23. And the Bible says this in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 15 through 23, about false prophets. Jesus said this, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Verse 20, Wherefore by their fruit ye shall know them. Verse 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Imposters in the church have a self-centered vision for the church and will lead people astray away from God. True followers of Christ will have a Christ-centered vision for the church and will lead people closer to the Lord. I want to tell you a story about someone. He was a dear friend of mine. And he 
He told the story of going to church for 40 years. He became a deacon of a church. And he said, for 40 years I sat on the back road every Sunday. For 40 years I attended that church. I blamed everything on everybody but me. Every, it was always someone else's fault. It was never mine. So for 40 years, I sat in the back row of this church as a deacon of the church. And then he said that if I would have died, I would have split hell wide, wide open because I was lost. He said, but one night, he couldn't sleep. The brother told me, a good friend of mine, he told me, he said, Brother Jerry, he said, one night I couldn't sleep. And I got up. My wife's sleeping right beside me, but I got up. I couldn't sleep. And Brother Joe went to the mirror, and he looked into the mirror for the first time and really took a lot of look at himself. And he said, my problems are my own. It's not nobody's fault. They're all mine. I've been walking around as a Christian for 40 years and never knew Christ. But he said, that night I made my peace with God. He repented of his sins and gave his life to Jesus Christ. He said, I had a changed life. You see, you can, just as Judas Iscariot, there can be apostles in the church. It can happen. Got two more scriptures that we're going to read. Turn in your Bible to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 15 and 18. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 15 through 18. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 15 through 18. And the Word of God says this. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said, And blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have, blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Turning your Bibles to the last scripture. Turn your Bibles to Galatians chapter 1. Matthew's Gospel chapter, no, excuse me, Galatians chapter 1. We're going to read uh, verses 6 through 9. Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. The last Bible verse. Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. And the Word of God says this. The Apostle Paul writing to the church in Galatia. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you unto the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him, let him be, a, be a cursed. Last verse. And we said before, so I say now again, if any man preach another gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. We're talking about imposters. People that make their way in the church. There's another story. Good friend of mine. He's went on to be with the Lord. He wouldn't mind if I told you this story. Because uh, I asked him that the, the testimony was so powerful to me that I asked him if I could share it sometimes. And this has been 20 years ago. He said he went to Shawnee Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky. Does anybody know where that's at? Shawnee Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky. He went there and became a deacon went there and all the things that he did. 
But he said, one service. The preacher got up and preached the gospel that morning. And for probably 30 years, he wondered whether or not he was saved or not. He questioned it because he said he was a boy and he didn't know if it was, if it was real or not. He, he always wondered. There was always uh, something he said in the back of his mind that would make him wonder. But he said that Sunday in a real big church, Shawnee Baptist Church in Louisville, Kentucky, he was serving as a deacon of a church. And he came forward. Came up, he said he talked to the preacher. And the preacher told him to sit down because he wasn't gonna, he was a deacon. He, he got saved and he wasn't going to go through all of that. He said, no, pastor. He says, I need to tell the church. The Lord wants me to tell the church. It was during a revival. When he was a boy, he said when he was 14 years old, he said his friends came forward. And he came forward. But he just said it was never real. He said he'd been pretending all those years. But that day... He said, I want to make it right. So that day, he gave his life to Jesus Christ. Amen. He gave his life to Jesus Christ, and he said, I had a complete change ever since. He said, I grew up in the church. I always thought that I was a born-again Christian. But he said that day when he did that, when he shared that testimony with the church, probably running about 800 to 1,000 people. People all across the church was coming forward because you see what it was they wondered too and that day they had a little if you will revival in that church Amen. it's easy to do it's easy to do this is, this is one of the sermons that I didn't even really want to preach I didn't want to One God gave it to me about six years ago I preached it this will make the second time. The last time was at Willisburg Revival. The Lord told me to uh, preach it, and I didn't do it. But this time he did. And this time I'm obeying my Lord. Amen. Imposters. It happens. It, it, it happens. Now, when I say this, I, I don't have anybody in mind. But I know it can happen. I've heard stories of it happen. I was in a, I was in a church service once and I had just become a Christian. I was young in the Lord. I guess my testimony is different because I was an atheist at one time. So when I came to know the Lord, I didn't know really anything. I just knew that morning uh, that morning in the little schoolhouse I gave my life to Christ with tears in my eyes. I knew it was real something happened to the point where I, sh I was. What happened? But you see, it can happen, though. I was fortunate. I was 28 when I gave my life to Christ. That's been almost 30 years ago. But there was a, had a business meeting one at church, and I was young, and I hadn't been going to church very long. And one of the ladies stood up the church was wanting to start. The pastor and some of the members said, we did a survey, and we found out that a 1 o'clock service, along with the 11 o'clock service, would be good for the community. We, we surveyed the community, and there was a lot of people already committed to going to a 1 o'clock service. So the pastor said, you don't owe me any more money. I will just come, and I will do that 1 o'clock service. And one of the ladies that stood up and said, no, you won't either. This church belongs to me. And it belongs to him. We started it. We founded it. It's our church. And that's not going to happen. Because it's my church. And I don't want it to happen. And I thought for a long time. How could somebody get into that position? That a church belongs to me. You see, a lot of the problems in the church can be solved when the Lord Jesus Christ becomes the head of the church. Our churches, it's time to wake up. This is not the 1950s. When everybody all went to church, they just went to church. We're living in a completely different society. It's time to get real with God. Don't play church. You're either Christian or you're not. 
You're either born again, on your way to heaven, or you're not a Christian, and you're on your way to a devil's hell. That's it. That's the only choice you got, my friend. That's it. Don't play games with God. It happens. Imposters. They walk around in the church. They, 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 they come in and they, and they work among us. Just like Judas Iscariot did. But he didn't fool Christ, did he? Christ knew who he was. But why did Christ let him walk with him? I, I walked in God in that. But he did, didn't he? But all along, Jesus knew that Judas Iscariot was an imposter in what he was doing. They walk among us. They live among us. Imposters. People who pretend before God. It happens. I've done it. I've done it. I know. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to sit in the church pew and want to do things your way, not God's way. I did it. I went to church every Sunday, was involved. But you see, I didn't want to do things God's way. I wanted to do things my way. That's an imposter. I've learned. I told you that God gave me this sermon to preach at Willisburg Baptist Church. He did. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And I said, do you really want this message? Part of me didn't want to hear what God had to say. I regretted it ever since. Oh, I prayed and I asked forgiveness. <clears throat> because I've learned. After almost 30 years of walking with the Lord, my life belongs to Him. Amen. There's things that I don't want to do. There's dreams that I had when I first started in ministry. There was dreams that I had. I dreamed of being a, another Billy Graham. You know what? I don't care anymore. All I care about now is serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I can preach to two people or I can preach to a thousand people. I don't care. I just want to do, do my Lord's will. Imposters. They... They come in church. Some of them, I think, are on TV. There's some that I, I don't know them, but I just don't know why if they don't. If they need money so bad, why don't, why don't they sell them big, big diamonds that are on their hands? I don't know. It's just it's a fault, you know. I wonder that. I want your money. I want your money. I want your money, and I'm not kidding you. There's big diamond rings all over this man's hand. Well, why don't you sell them rings? I, I just think those things. You know, it seems reasonable to me. There was the postures. They walk among us. They live among us. They preach on TV. They, uh, they go to church with us but they don't really care about doing the Lord's will. They care about doing their own will. I'm going to close. But when I close, I'm going to ask you a question. Are you an imposter? You can talk to me all day. Oh, you can fool me all day. You can, I'm easily fooled. <laughs> You probably even, maybe even before your pastor, I don't know. But I know who you came for, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Imposters. I'm going to close right here. Are you playing a games with God? Ask yourself that today. Are you playing games with God? Or... Do you know that God's got something for you to do and you keep refusing? It's easy to do. It's easy to do. I, I've done it. I've done it. And the sermon that I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching to me. It can happen. It can happen to any of us. 
But don't play things with God. Don't play pretend with the Lord. You got to, you, you, you're either born again on your way to heaven or you're not born again on your way to hell. That's it. That's our choices. But has the Lord called you to do something? Do you know the Lord? Do you know for sure that you know? Do you know for sure that if you was to die right now, you're going to be with the Lord? Do you know? Don't play, don't play pretend with the Lord. Okay? I say this in love. I really do. That's all I've got. That's it. Thank you, Brother Jerry. Let's, let's uh, have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for the message that we've heard tonight. And Father, his message was pretty much the same message that I preached my very first sermon on, is playing games with the Lord. God, I pray that there's nobody here tonight that's doing that. I pray that we're all faithful servants. And God, I pray that if there's anybody here that's been playing games or Anybody that doesn't know the Lord, that they, they would make that known tonight. That they would come forward and they would uh, receive, truly receive Jesus into their heart and, and be that born-again person that lives and, and loves the Lord with, with all their heart. God, I thank you for the message that we've heard, and I just pray that your spirit would move and guide our hearts tonight. We ask it in Jesus' name.